we have changed the composition of the atmosphere. We've increased greenhouse gases and aerosols. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide warm the atmosphere. When we emit sulphur into the atmosphere, it turns into little particles, otherwise known as aerosols, and actually slightly cools uh, the Earth's atmosphere. And therefore you've got greenhouse gases warm, aerosols cool, and we humans have affected the emissions and the atmospheric concentration of both greenhouse gases and aerosols. We've seen warmer temperatures in the past, and I'll show that. We're seeing already changing precipitation patterns, both spatially and temporally. Sea level has already increased. We're seeing higher storm surges. 60,000 mountain glaciers are retreating. The Greenland ice cap is melting faster than we can understand. Arctic sea ice in summer is melting at a very rapid rate. We're seeing more extreme weather events, more heat waves, floods and droughts. And we're seeing more intense cyclonic events. That's the hurricanes in the Atlantic, cyclones in the, uh, in the Pacific. Clearly, climate change and ecosystem degradation, uh, and that includes loss of biodiversity, land and water degradation, along with air pollution, undermines our ability for economic growth, poverty alleviation, the livelihoods of the poor, undermines human health, and it attacks and it undermines personal, national and regional security. It's both an inter- and intra-generational equity issue or issues, Developing country and poor people are the most vulnerable to whether it's climate change or loss of biodiversity. And yet it's the rich countries, the industrialised worlds that has caused the problem. And the actions of today will affect future generations. And therefore this is very much a scientific issue, a moral issue, an ethical issue, an economic issue. We need to mitigate and adapt to climate change. The Earth's climate is already changing. It has changed. And future change is absolutely inevitable. Therefore, it's not a question, do we just mitigate climate change? That is to say, limit climate change. Or do we adapt to climate change? It must be both. Most of the emissions of greenhouse gases that cause climate change are either due to the way we produce and use energy or the way we actually manage our agricultural and forestry systems. We've got to recognise energy, access to energy, is the most important thing for economic growth and poverty alleviation. Therefore, as we work with developing countries, the challenge is not to limit their ability to access energy, but how can they get energy that is both affordable and what I would call low carbon. In other words, it does not pollute the environment. So we've got to, there's going to have to be north-south, south-south cooperation, private sector working with government. So the challenge is the transition to a low carbon economy that is affordable in both industrial and developing countries. Adaptation should be viewed as how do we adapt to a changing climate by integrating climate considerations in every sector. When we manage water, agriculture, health, coastal zone, we should consider how is the climate behaving today and how might climate change in the future. And therefore, climate change should be a simple thing of integrating its consideration in all sector and national economic planning. I'm actually in survival mode now because I think things are so serious that unless we take action immediately, we are faced with a, a terribly serious situation. So my answer to the proposition at the beginning of this evening is, um, can we cope? No, I don't think we can, not unless we act now or pretty soon. Because it's obvious to me uh, that a precondition for the functioning of civil society is the availability of secure and reliable and sustainable supplies of food. And I think that... Frankly, um, the future availability of those supplies is now in question unless uh, we take action.